Look at that shit. Can you see it? Is it too bright? Ugh, there we go. There we go. Finally don't have COVID anymore. I, I did the IRL COVID skip. I was sick for a little bit. Uh, we're all good now though. And I got some really exciting stuff to show you guys. I'm gonna show you my entire collection of all the stuff that I invest in, in terms of like physical things. We're gonna start off with this table and then I'm gonna show you all of my stuff that is um, from the 90s specifically after that, or that a 90s kid would remember. And uh, we'll go with uh, we'll go with the stuff on the table first. We'll end with the trading cards. So we're gonna start off with these guys, these crochet guys. So I went to this convention. I got them. I got Gengar. We got Batman over here. We got Mudkip. I still need the mic. We got Cyndaquil. We got the Squid Game guy, and you guys know I'm a real fan of Squid Game because I actually have the mask. I was the I was the same dude for Halloween. That's how crazy it is. And then we got Spider-Man. We got Oddish. These things are really cool. I also have a Spider-Man piggy bank. And we got Venom as well. If anybody knows what this car is, you're a smart person, and you know it's the only car you should ever buy in your entire life, and that's it. But if you can't, then obviously you have to settle for what you can get, like most of us, including me, but I have a model of it. And one day, if I don't own an R32, I will drive one <laughs> or get or buy one for someone else. So, yeah, this thing's cool. It's sealed. Uh, this is a gift from my mother, for my birthday a long time ago. Uh, this is an actual replica of my actual car, of my RX-7. This is, my girlfriend got me this, actually. Uh, she looked for two months for it. And it is almost exactly the same as my actual car in terms of the paint job and the actual wheels even. Um, and the modifications to it on the exterior. It's really cool. So this is one of my favorite things. This is brand new actually, I just got this. My uncle got me this for Christmas. Anybody that watched the new Avatar movie, I'm gonna be looking for all of these eventually. Some people, some people go crazy on them and buy them and sell them and stuff like that. I don't know as much about the new stuff. Uh, more familiar with the old stuff, but I think one day this will be valuable, and I, I really love Avatar, so I'm gonna keep it. Ugh. We got Dune, got Stilgar here. Anyone that's seen Dune knows Stilgar is one of like the main characters of the Fremen. He's pretty cool. I actually have two of him. Unfortunately, the first one I had, it was on the wall, and uh, what happened is it fell off, and uh, yeah, it got damaged. So yeah, these are a little heavy. Be careful when you hang them on the wall. That's Duncan Idaho. Um, Jason Momoa plays him. Pretty cool. This is my broken Duncan Idaho. I might give them away to one of you guys. Maybe we'll do a giveaway at some point if I start shipping things to people. I think that would be really cool because some people requested that I ship them trading cards and they'll pay for them, but that's down the road. We'll see. We got Lady Jessica, who is uh, Paul's mom. One of the main characters. It's pretty cool. I know the light behind me is going to probably reflect off these boxes a little bit, so I'll try my best to get it kind of clear. Got Batman, anybody that watched the new Batman movie. Um, there's quite a few of these they released. I got as many as I could. I got the full collection when it came out, then they've added more since then. Um, but we got just Bruce Wayne, um, civilian. Uh, he can be paired with a, his motorbike, I believe. I don't have the motorbike. I got these for a ridiculous price, by the way. Pretty much everything you see on this table, I either got for free or I paid next to nothing for, for what it's worth, aside from a few things. So I got a really good deal on all these. Catwoman. We got regular Batman. Where is she? <laughs> we got the penguin. One of my favorite penguins. And one of my favorite Riddlers too. The way they, they did the new movie was pretty good. If you guys know Batman's one of my favorite movies, the newest one. I've watched it five times and I own it, so probably watch it again too. But this is really cool. He's a really good villain. Um, so you guys have seen a lot of my Cuphead pops before, but I haven't shown you all of them. I believe this is all of them. I might have more that I couldn't find. There's actually, there's, possi there's possibly more stuff that's not in this room that's packed away somewhere. So I'm not exactly sure if this is everything, but 
let's start with this. So we got Cuphead. Just regular Cuphead. Um, I think this... Ooh, actually, I dropped it. Oops. Rip, it's not worth anything anymore. Yep, it's fucked. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's all good. No, we got we got regular Cuphead. We got Calamaria. Who is like the, the mermaid that you fight in the water. Really, really difficult. Got Miss Chalice. I got two of them. Um, oh, sorry. Wait, I got Miss Chalice and I got Legendary Chalice. My bad. Got that one. Got this. Two Sally Stage Plays. That's how much I like Sally Stage Play. Again, I might sell some of these in the future or do giveaways for anything I have duplicates of. I have a lot of duplicate stuff. So, yeah, that, especially with the cards. The cards, I have a ton of duplicates. King Dice. Golden King Dice. And again, I know a lot of you guys, like, might be in a different series, so I'm going to pretty much hit you with something that's for everybody in the chat. And if it's not, then I <laughs> I feel bad for how you grew up because there's a lot of cool shit here. So, there's uh, another Miss Chalice. Oh, the Legendary Chalice. Two Legendary Chalices. Apparently there's two of those. This is my absolute favorite thing I have, pretty much, from Cuphead. This is the uh, the Cagney Card Nation. Um, the reason it's so cool is you could only get it at a convention in 2017, I believe. Or, sorry, 2018. 2018 Spring Convention Exclusive. Um, and they're, this is really hard to find. Like, this is extremely hard to find. It's in perfect condition, and it's in the, the, the case, too. So that's super valuable. Regular King Dice, same thing. Um, I found more of the gold version of him than the regular one, but... Um, he's in pretty good shape. He's sealed in the box and everything like that. It's all good. Got Mr. Chimes. Mr. Chimes over here. Who is the monkey in the uh, level where you're doing the King Dice, uh, the casino. And you go through all the bosses and he's one of them. He's got the symbols. And then you got Airplane Cuphead. Pretty sick. Hey, hey, Yugs. Hey, Yugs. Check out my red eyes, black dragon. This is it. We got, we got uh, Joey Wheeler, dude. <laughs> I play flame swordsman in defense position. All right, we got, uh, we got devil. The devil's really, really hard to find too. Uh, it took me a long time to find that. I got Michael Jordan because uh, as a child, Chicago Bulls, my favorite uh, team for basketball growing up until Around the time I stopped getting into basketball as much, um, and Michael Jordan was my favorite basketball player, so I had a lot of his stuff. I had a I had a jersey of his at one point, I believe. It wasn't signed, but at least I, I got the the pop toy. There's a big one of him too. It's a huge one. Yeah, he's one of my favorite basketball players. I got Majin Buu, special edition. This one I put on Instagram. I don't think this is really worth a lot or it's valuable or anything, but it was cool, so I got it. Um, this. Most recently, this is actually probably like the coolest thing I've gotten in recent time. The guy at the store gave me this for half price. He was selling this for about 70 bucks. I think he gave it to me for like about 35 or so. This is a, a special edition Thanos. Um, and this one I know is relatively sought after. It's like Chrome. Let me see if I can show you properly. It's really cool. So we got that. Uh, another King Dice, another Sally Stage play. The King Dice is yellow, though. And then we got Mugman, which one of you guys actually uh, said you would send me. I really appreciate that. That's pretty cool. And we got freaking Black Adam, dude. Anybody see Black Adam? He, like, he taught you that doors are not important. You can walk through walls. They don't need doorways. Okay, we got that. Um, that's a lot of the new stuff. I, on the table here, my buddy got me this for my birthday. It's a collage. It's actually a puzzle of all the Marvel characters that are cool. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a new setup actually in the next uh, few days where we do some new lighting. And I put this stuff up so you'll see it. Uh, now we're going to move on to the really, really cool stuff that's pretty rare, pretty expensive, and... Like my favorite stuff. Uh, so, that's all on the floor. 
we have two choices, actually. Two choices. Who's a big fan of Star Wars here? Star Wars or, or comic books? Pick one or the other. Star Wars? Okay, we'll start with Star Wars, because Star Wars for me, so... Just as a frame of reference, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, but I am into collecting some of the stuff because my uncle is. And um, yeah, when I was younger, actually, before my grandma passed away, she got me uh, a Star Wars character or figure, and I started collecting them because of that. So this is the one she got me. She also got me an R2-D2 as well, but I can't find it at the moment. This is from 2006. Actually, wait, no, 2004, I believe. Let me see. Yes. This one is, this one's fairly older, so... I had I got this when I was about 10 years old, I believe, and then that's actually what started me with collecting the sealed stuff a little bit more. So there's that. Now this is pretty interesting. Ugh. So the next two bags of stuff I'm going to show you, my buddy literally just got me for Christmas. Like they just passed, so I just got these. He got me basically most of a set that is from 1996 to 1998, I believe it is. Star Wars: Power of the Force, starting off with Greedo. This stuff's really old. This stuff is older than some of the people watching right now. C-3PO? I just know these are ancient, and there's a flashback photo card that's in there. You can pull the little tab on it and pull it out of the thing, and it'll do something, but it hasn't been pulled yet, so this is pretty crazy. <laughs> oh, the chroma key on OBS. True. Okay, let's, uh, let's remove the chroma key on OBS really quick. Another one. We got Lax Sivrak with freeze frame action slide right here. It's pretty cool. Okay. We have Admirable Akbar, so I'm sure a lot of you guys know Admiral Akbar. He is pretty famous when it comes to the Star Wars stuff. Bug-eyed looking dude. He looks like he looks like he's from Abe's Odyssey. That's what he reminds me of. We got, let's see, Sand Trooper, ooh. And I love the way that they did the holographic stuff on the card here, cause like, how many toys do you go and see in the stores now that look this cool, man? Toys have become shitty. I'm just gonna say that right now. And plastic is about to be a thing where like, they they uh, don't do, uh, I guess, toys with the uh, blisters that are completely plastic anymore, or the cases that are fully plastic, so you're not gonna find those anymore. And if you have toys that are sealed, they're plastic, they're gonna be a little bit more valuable because of that. That's a prediction I'm making. And you'll see when, I, when, I, when I'm talking about like the full plastic ones, I have some on the floor. We'll get to those after. So we got um, from the newly created footage in Star Wars Trilogy, um, the ASP-7 droid. So um, I'm sure a lot of you guys in chat that are older you probably remember when this stuff was like out and everything like that. For me, I was two years old when some of this stuff came out, so I have no clue what the fuck it is. And by the time I was a child that would consume toys from stores, they were already off the shelf. So I don't remember any of this stuff. This is 1997 right here. This one's a little older. One year older. Forlom. You bought them new? Bing, that's crazy, dude. That's really cool that you bought them. And I have them in my hand right now. <laughs> I just hope there's something for everybody here, because like... There's, there's a whole nother set of things. There's two more whole categories of things that are major that, that we're gonna get into after this. We got R5-D4 concealed missile launcher with the little missile inside included. Be careful of your eyeballs. Don't shoot your eye out. Uh, Tuscan Raider. Tuscan Raider. Here's where the stuff gets a bit cooler. Big box deluxe edition. The Snowtrooper. And the Snowtrooper is not only just in there with uh, himself, but he's got a lot of cool equipment too. This is a big one. And there's some bigger boxes you can get for this set too. I actually went to a store and they had some more stuff I could complete it with. But for me, again, I don't collect Star Wars. I don't buy Star Wars stuff. I usually have been given it by other people as a gift, so I just keep it, but I don't know a lot about it. Um, once I know more, I might, I might grab those other things I saw at the store. We got Chewbacca and he's got a coin in there, dude. You know that that coin right there, if I open this, I could buy a Bugatti. Look at that, it's another one. What color is your Bugatti? I don't care, I have two. Yeah, sorry, that was Emperor Palpatine. That's actually pretty important. Emperor Palpatine's one of my favorite characters from the bad guys. He's pretty cool. So we got that. Also, um, everyone from uh, Jack, thank you for uh, for raiding, guys. We're, we're looking at 
basically a bunch of 90s nostalgia and the rest of my collection that I have in collectibles, including trading cards. We're on the Star Wars stuff right now. Almost uh, halfway through, about oh, almost done. Getting there. Welcome. Need to focus. Luke Skywalker. Um, this one is 1999. This one's a little older, actually. This is from The Power of the Force. Aunt Biru with the flashback photo as well. She's actually, I think she's pretty sought after in this set. A lot of the flash photo ones are cool. Because, like, I could pull this thing out of here, but I'm not going to. We got uh, Garandin. I don't know if I pronounced that right, Garandin. Pretty cool. Anakin Skywalker, but he's the old Anakin Skywalker. It's pretty cool too. Death Star Gunner. This guy looks crazy. That's finally the very final part of the Star Wars collection other than my R2-D2 that I couldn't find is a uh, Weequay Skiff Guard. Moving on to really, really old stuff with a little bit of things mixed in here. Ooh. All right, Captain America. Buddy got me this as a birthday gift. A little bit newer, 2006, I believe, for this one. Yeah, 2006. Not that old, but if you're a 90s kid, maybe, maybe I would have bought this in the store when I was a kid. Maybe I would have seen it. I was really into Spider-Man, though, so Captain America became more of a favorite like later on. But he's cool. We got him. My friend also got me a Ninja Turtle, which is awesome too. Now, actually, this is making me realize I do actually have more stuff that I couldn't figure out where it was. Because I have Spawn figures, I have McFarlane toys too. So yeah, got Leo. Pretty cool. This is a long shot that has the label ripped off. So this one's not as valuable because this is gone from the front of it. There should be a label right here. Package is in good condition. These come with a comic as well. These are the... Uh, the Mojo series. Very similar to Marvel Legends, which I do have Marvel Legends right below the desk. We got Deathlock. I believe this is Deathlock. So these are the packages where they're not going to be making toys like this anymore in the future. The plastic won't be allowed to be put on the shelf. It'll be in a box, most likely. And I think that uh, with that being said, the prediction is these kinds of things will be more valuable because they're fully plastic. But these are a little, little, they're kind of like mid 2000s. Uh, and then this is my favorite of the Marvel Legends, Luke Cage. Um, I love the Luke Cage show. I watch it twice. <laughs> Luke Cage is awesome, so this is really cool. I've never actually even seen a toy of Luke Cage before, um, before getting this as a gift, so it was really awesome. Um, I believe that this was given to Toy Biz employees, um, like shareholders, I believe, or something like that. I don't know if this is something you can actually buy. Uh, my friend has one that's similar as well. I don't know if it's the one that he has that's more valuable than this one, but you can see it has collectors on it. It's a Toy Biz toy. Toy Biz toys are pretty sought after too. This is in pretty good shape. It's got the Kingpin. It's got Black Suit Spider-Man. Spider-Man with the octopus arms and then Eddie Brock as Venom, which is sick. Now we're getting on to the actual 1994 Spider-Man series. I was not born when these came out. I, I was either a fetus or I was not, or, or, or I was just coming out of the womb at the very latest, but I probably wasn't born when these were made originally. Uh, I did watch the series. I did watch the cartoon. So I love this shit. These are in really good shape too. And uh, I don't know if I can show you on the camera, but it says 1994 in the back. Will it focus well enough? Can anybody see 1994 there? Well, maybe it'll pick up in the video. I'm gonna be making a video of this, but yeah, these are 1994. We got the Green Goblin. Pretty crazy. Again, the card is just pretty decent condition. Not too bad. The corners are okay, no scuffs. Uh, didn't need to be taped. The blister is still pretty good too. Um, just a little bit wavy on the card, but yeah, looks, looks good. We got... Uh, Spider-Man with a parachute, the web parachute. Um, and this is when they made toys differently. You can see actually even if you look in there, they don't make shit like that anymore. They don't. Toys these days are made terribly. 
All right, we got Venom. Just basic Venom. Pretty cool. We got Peter Parker. Peter Parker's pretty uh, pretty good. Like, this is a cool thing to have. He's a little harder to find. He ends, to, ends up being a bit more expensive in this set. Um, around the time I got this one, people were like offering 70 bucks for them with shipping included. Um, I got it for about $30, which is pretty cool. We got Posable Spider-Man. Posable Action Spider-Man. I have the Punisher. Atomizing Punisher. That's pretty cool because a lot of these things, they have interactive uh, pieces that come with them that you can do uh, little attacks with and little little battle scenes if you want to act them out as a ch child. Again, toys these days, you got to pay $500 for a piece of plastic that's like hooked up to a battery and it probably will break in like two seconds. This shit's all just like mechanical and you could shoot things out of it. And it was probably $10 when it came out. Or less. So yeah. You got Craven, I believe. Spear throwing Craven. Which is really sick. Craven the Hunter is uh, a little bit harder to find. Vulture. Pretty sick. We got the Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin was one that um, I actually just picked up the most recently. And it says $30 on the sticker. I paid the guy 20 because I bought a bunch of other stuff. You can sell this for around 55 to 60 bucks right now, I think, in the shape it's in. But if it was in mint and it was like PSA graded or whatever uh, service you want to send it into, whoever grades the figures, you probably could fetch a decent amount for it. Um, it's not in the greatest shape, but I think that's why I paid a bit less for it. I needed it to complete part of the collection. We got Web Racer Spider-Man. That one has a sticker on it too. I did not pay the sticker price. This one was included in a bundle, I believe. Pretty sick. This is the Chameleon. Anybody remember the Chameleon from the cartoon? They should make a movie with the Chameleon. It's pretty sick. And it has a little story too, and it always shows you which ones you can collect. So. I think even the packages were more interesting to read too. Like there's just so much more information on the back of this. Uh, we got Scorpion. One of my favorites. And we got Shocker, another one of my favorites. Shocker's pretty hard to find in this set. He's actually in really good shape, like incredible shape. Now, I'm sure you were thinking, Skrilla, calm down, you have way too many things. It's not over. There are legit two more boxes of Spider-Man. And then we're moving on to trading cards. Got Carnage. Carnage uh, was the first 1994 Spider-Man toy I ever got. Um, he is my favorite Spider-Man character um, in general, pretty much. So, like, out of the bad guys, I guess. He's my favorite Spider-Man bad guy. Very cool. We got uh, Venom with a breastplate here. You can change his little torso thing. He's got tongue flicking action. Don't try that at home. We got Rhino. Big boy Rhino. We got the Lizard. Dr. Connors, which is pretty cool. He's in really good shape, too. Uh, this is actually thrown in here randomly. Um, this is mine, but I actually forgot about it. My buddy gave me a Wolverine. So I have a friend that collects X-Men. We're actually going to do a video with him. I'm going to film his entire collection as well, because he has, like probably 10 times more stuff than I do, but he has it in a way where it's like, kind of like a museum. It's all on display, so you can just take a camera and pan through it all. I'm gonna do a really quick video on his collection, but he has all the X-Men. He has pretty much every single one. Um, so I think he had a duplicate and I bought this off him or he gave it to me, Wolverine. We got uh, Web Glider, pretty sick. This one is actually interesting because this toy is fucking heavy. Like, this is actually really heavy. Um, we got Kingpin. <laughs> and when it came out, it has the original sticker of what it was selling for when it debuted. $7.97 in 1994 for this. Pretty crazy, man. This is actually a hefty toy. This nowadays would be probably $35, $40 or something like that. Maybe, maybe 30 bucks on the conservative side at Walmart. It's crazy.
And then we got Spider-Man. Black suit with a badge. And the web. And then... <sighs> what is this? Night Shadow. Night Shadow Spider-Man. Black and red suit. Cool. Spider-Man. Nick Fury. Looking a little different. Doesn't look like Samuel Jackson, but it's like the comic book one. OG Nick Fury. This is the coolest 1994 Spider-Man toy I actually own in general, um, even though Carnage is my favorite. Uh, this is extremely hard to find. This is the hardest one to find in general. This is Mysterio. Uh, and this is actually a version of Mysterio that's more rare than one of the, the other ones you can get. There's a couple different colors and like variations, but this was extremely hard to find. This took over a year to find. We got The Prowler, which I hope is in a movie at some point, because uh, in Spider-Verse, if you guys have seen um, Enter the Spider-Verse, the animated series, or I guess movie series, uh, he's in it. It's uh, Uncle Aaron, I guess, is The Prowler. Miles Morales' uncle. Really cool. Secret storage backpack, Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Sense, Spider-Man. Six-arm Spider-Man. This one's really weird and fairly expensive. <laughs> we got Morbius. Morbius movie was kind of shitty. We got Morbius though. The toy's cooler than the movie. Guaranteed. Get this instead of watching the movie. And then we got Venom 2, who is also Eddie Brock as well. Pretty sick. It's Morbin time, yeah. That's all the spider. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the area a little bit, and then we're gonna go over the cards. Give me a second. I have a heavy ass box of a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh. Right here. And I'm gonna do something unbelievable in two seconds. And you'll see. First we gotta sit down and take a break. I'm sweating, dude. <laughs> this is this is some hard work with the toys here. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just uh I'm just flustered you guys are making me all hot. Being back and such. This is the empty bag. Or the bag of empty uh, packages to remind me that when I'm opening Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I shouldn't be opening, I'm an actual crackhead and I shouldn't do it. So I keep this as a reminder, don't open anything, keep it sealed. But the last time I opened any packages, I pulled a Toon World from Spell Ruler or Magic Ruler, sorry. And then uh, I pulled a like the rarest card you can get from a 2004 set. That's not worth a lot of money, but it's OK. It kind of makes back the cost, so I feel OK. But yeah, I went on like a little bit of a spree of opening some stuff. So that's that. Um, it's gonna give you like a quick glance of a few things. I'm gonna be eventually getting graded and all that. These are not really super valuable. But it's a binder. So I got a ton of shit in here. A lot of it's new. A lot of it's newer stuff. Um, I don't play the game, the trading card game with the current rules. I'm only really knowledgeable on the old school stuff. So you see some mirror forces in there, you know, you, you see some stuff that you probably are familiar with, but it's all from newer sets. Like none of this stuff is super valuable. So just use your imagination. This binder is not that interesting, but it is probably worth a collective 100 bucks or something like that. Maybe 200 bucks in here at least. Uh, we got. Let's see. I believe these are all my loose super rares that I have that are yet to be considered for grading or price checked. I do have notepads with price price charts, price sheets on a lot of this stuff, but not everything. I have to actually catch up on it, but this uh, has yet to be priced. It's just a bunch of super rares. Uh, some of them are first edition. Yeah, some of them are first edition. A lot of them are new though. Got some loose cards. Uh, let's see, We got. I picked up a few of these actually recently because um, I actually used to resell them. People like to buy these. It's a mystery box. So you see, you get the Legend of Blue Eyes pack or one of the original ones. You get a deck, uh, you get a Kaiba pack, which I think those are actually 
kind of sought after a little bit. The whole value of what's in this box is worth more than you pay. But um, the thing that people usually go for is the original pack that's in here. I don't recommend buying these to open them, but I would buy them and sell them or sell the stuff inside. <laughs> so I'm going to hold on to these for a little bit. I got three of them. I got this one. And somebody, somebody at Walmart was a genius. They were like, yo, I'm just going to go to Walmart and I'm going to punch a hole in the bottom of the box to see what's inside. Lucky to my, I guess, fortune, I, I pick it up and I can see what's inside. And it's actually the good thing that people want to buy inside the box because someone else punched a hole in it. So now I know what's inside, which is really good. So it's even more valuable. <laughs> then we got another one of these again, three of them. We got... I got a graded Horn of Heaven. <laughs> it's not really worth that much money. It's a, it's a 10. It's a perfect 10. Um, but yeah, I graded, graded Horn of Heaven. Accidentally more valuable. It's more valuable because I can tell you what pack is in there that is random usually. And the person that wants to buy Invasion of Chaos will buy the box. Because they're like, because Invasion of Chaos, you can pull um, Chaos Emperor Dragon or Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning, I believe. And those are worth a lot of money. I mean, not like a crazy amount, but it's a decent amount for like the reissued stuff. Okay, so now we have, what is this? This is my box of everything that I'm going to grade one day. I can't really show you everything rather than just shuffling through it. So here, Tomb World, I pulled this recently. This is unlimited. It's not worth that much. It's okay. Um, I also pulled um, Beast of Tall War, which is pretty old school as well for Yu-Gi-Oh. That is from Pharaoh's Servant. We got the Gate Guardian pieces here. I sold my Gate Guardian for 200 bucks, the unlimited one that I had um, that I pulled a while ago. So I don't have it anymore. I have two Suijins though. Two Suijins. These, these are all like mint condition. They've never been touched by a fingerprint other than being put into the sleeves. Obviously double sleeve, but um, we got Kiku. He's pretty old school as well. He was actually used in the, in the format for tournaments, I believe at one point. Um, we got, I have some actual really cool stuff in here. Let me see if I can find <laughs> a lot of variations of Dark Magician, apparently, that are not that valuable, but maybe, maybe one day someone will care. So we got <laughs> Dark Magician alternate art right there, secret rare. Got this Dark Magician. It's actually coming out of the thing, too. Get back in there. Jeez. Box is being sh shooken around so much. Dark Magician with the original LLB artwork. We got um, Arcana's Dark, Dark Magician, if you guys watch the anime, the magician dude that fights Yugi. Pretty cool. And then alternate artwork, Dark Magician Girl. Not really that valuable, but it's pretty cool. Um, here is something that's really important to me. Trihorn Dragon from LLB. Um, so this PSA 10 Unlimited still can fetch you a decent price. I wish it was first edition, but Trihorn Dragon LLB is fucking cool. That's really cool. That's one of the coolest things. <laughs> so I kept that. I didn't sell it. I got offered 200 bucks for it, but I, but I kept it, though. Um, I think it could probably fetch more than that graded, though. I got Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon. This thing's worth quite a bit, too, right now, as is. I'd say at least, like, 35, 40 bucks. Probably over, probably hundreds graded. It was a 10. Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. Mint. Centered perfectly. Corners are good. I would actually give it a 9.5 myself, a 9 to a 9.5 if I had to grade it. Pretty sick. Uh, I got offered $300 for this one. I'm not going to sell it, though. I'm going to get it graded. Uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon, obviously. This one is not an LLB. This, is, this one's not really worth anything, but I think I checked the price and it was like 5 bucks. So anything that's like 5 bucks or over is in this box, basically. Or that at one point in time I thought maybe could be bundled with other things to get graded just because. Uh, I have a. This, this is from. Oh, wait a second, actually. I do have Gate Guardian. I have two Gate Guardians. Wait a second, I sold my Gate Guardian, but I have another one. What? That's crazy, man. Okay, apparently I had two Gate Guardians. That's pretty sick. This one, yeah, very valuable as well. Super, super valuable. Alternate artwork, Dark Paladin. The one it was supposed to be is um, this one, I believe, but then they had a mistake where it was like his portrait, and that one was worth a lot. This one's not as much. Uh, we got Exodia Necros. 
Uh, this I've pulled three times. And my buddy got so mad at me, I actually gave him one for free because he got pissed off since we bought a bunch of cards together and he didn't pull anything. I pulled three of them. They were pretty good. Uh, I got the god cards, which I don't believe are... I don't have all three of them. I have two of them here. These ones are the ones you can actually use. You can play them in the game. They're not super valuable, but again, the set that they were in, um, if it doesn't get remade again, it could be worth a bit. Got Dark Mirror Force here. It's another one of my favorites. There we go. And again, anybody that uh, has been resubbing or there's any alert in chat that I didn't see, I'm going to go back through all of that stuff, guys, before we play some games. So thank you so much for being patient, though. I appreciate it. What else we got? We got Help Homer. This is from Retro Pack 2. So it's not the most valuable version of it, but it's old, though. This is from 2006, I think, or something like that. Or maybe a little bit after that. Uh, Green Baboon Defender of the Forest. That's not really that good. Let me see. There, I have something in here from childhood that is really sick that you guys will recognize. I gotta find it, though. It's probably one of the coolest cards I have. Fiend Mega Cyber. This one's pretty sick. You guys probably remember that. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Found it. So this thing is the coolest card. This is my favorite card. I, I will never get rid of this one. I don't think I'll ever sell it, but because it's from my childhood, I never actually uh, played it in a game. I put it in a package right away, and I kept it since I was about probably like nine years old or whatever. First edition... Mint Condition Dragon Master Knight. Uh, it's the highest attack power card that was invented in the game at that point for a long time. 5,000, I believe. Um, so that's Black Luster Soldier on top of a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. It's pretty sick. And then we got Ring Dragon of Ra right here again. So, yeah. Um, that's some of the cooler stuff I have. There's even more. There's even more, though. There's even better. Just wait for it. I'm going to put this away, and then we're going to get into the coolest of the coolest. And then a bonus surprise. Pursue, yeah, it's good to see you as well, guys. Like everybody that's here, I, I appreciate you guys being here. There's definitely a lot to catch up on. I'm just glad I feel better. I was feeling really bad when I was sick. I've never been um, sick in a way like I was with COVID, where you know the symptoms are just really weird. And even now, too, like, my sense of smell is not as good as it was. Uh, it got a bit better again, but it, my sense of smell started kind of going away after I was already getting better, which I didn't expect. So it's COVID's really weird. Okay. Oh, what else do we got? Um, I have some blisters that are, like, sealed that are loose. These aren't really worth a crazy amount, but, I mean, first edition two-pack blister here. Uh, this one is... Legendary Duelists, not that valuable, but in the future, maybe it will be. We got uh, First Edition Flames of Destruction as well. Um, these were things that I would usually give away for free with stuff that I'd sell to people, because I used to resell a lot of this stuff as like a side kind of thing. And whenever I'd go meet somebody and I'd give them some things, I just, uh, or like I'd sent them to them, I would send them these or I'd give them these, because, uh, you know, it's pretty cheap to do that. Pendulum Evolution, First Edition. And again, I, have, I know nothing about new Yu-Gi-Oh! So I stay away from it. Only when it's intertwined with the old, the OG stuff do I partake. All right, you're about to see something shocking. This is gonna blow your mind, guys. Wait for it. All right, here we go. This is my inventory right now. Some of it. Um, these are the boosters that I would sell. So, if I was going to do a giveaway, and I wanted to give you guys some Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I'd give you a sealed package from in here. These are old. <laughs> some of them. Some of them are really old. So, some of you guys that are into Yu-Gi-Oh, you probably know, at one point, there was a booster pack that they released called Spell Ruler. Um, but before it was called Spell Ruler, it was called Magic Ruler. And Magic the Gathering actually uh, caused a problem about that. There's some copyright issues, so they had to actually change the name of the package. This is Magic Ruler. This is before Spell Ruler was... This has the original Konami logo on it. This right here is 20 years old. 21 years old. 
This is older than some of the people that are watching. 21 years old right here. How did I get this? Um, a guy that bought a storage facility randomly that had a bunch of Konami stuff in it sold it to me. <laughs> and he, he, he found, I think it was uh, just tons of boxes of these kinds of things and he was selling them. So that's super cool. Um, we got, I'll show you something that's not as insane and then we'll finish with the, with the best. So Dark Crisis. You guys know Dark Crisis? That's why I pulled Exodia Necros from. I have so many Dark Crisis packages. These ones are uh, reissued. They're not the ones that came out way, 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 way back. But if you pull an Exodia from it, for example, it's still worth like 30 to, you know, 30 to 50 bucks, maybe a couple hundred if you get it graded and it's really good condition at the right price. But, you know, that's cool. Uh, whatever. I got some packages that are sealed that are a little bit newer too, but they're not as interesting. This is probably the coolest. Rise of Destiny, first edition, 2004. So this is 19 years old and it's first edition. It's the first print of it ever made. If you pull the guy on the package from like what's in my hand right now and you get it graded out of 10, it's worth over $2,000. And that's a that's a very low price for a Yu-Gi-Oh card that's this old. This isn't even a set that's as valuable, but it's but the, the highest yielding card from this set is over $2,000. So <sighs> it'd be a shame if, um, you know, like if I just, accidentally uh you know oh fuck i opened it i was joking i didn't mean to open it dude i actually didn't mean to open it. i was joking i was gonna say i was joking dude now it's open no i'm, I'm fucking with you guys <laughs> you want to know why i'm fucking with you you want to know why i'm fucking with you check this out i have an entire booster box sealed from 2004 of the same thing get on my level dude Get on my level, man. <laughs> oh man, okay, let's see what's inside this right now. Guys, if I pull that card I was just saying right now, I'm gonna gift everybody a sub. Actually, that's a lie, that's a lie. I'm gonna gift one sub. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open, we're gonna, we're gonna do the card trick. I think it's the first four cards, I believe. One, two, three, four. Is it the third? So the third or the fourth, let me see. Third or the fourth, I don't know. Actually, here, we're just gonna go through it, fuck it. Mirage Dragon, first card. We got Harpy's Hunting Ground. Raging Flame Sprite. Zing Zen Hu. And is this it? Chain Burst, okay, I'm, I'm broke. That's not worth anything. I'm broke. I can't stream anymore, guys. I gotta go, uh... I gotta go to the coal mine. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. I did that on purpose. I actually wanted to open it. Don't worry. It's all good. We're good. We're good. We're good. But yeah, this package right here, um... People used to pay me up to $100 for one of these. So, that's how much that could be worth on the high end. I would sell them for probably 50. Um, and the sealed box right now, it's worth about 1500. I paid about a thousand for it, but you can sell it for, if you do pack for pack, you could probably make quite a bit of money off it. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's some stuff right there for you guys. That is basically a trip down memory lane. I'm sure that if you uh, were a child in the nineties, you remember a lot of that. And there's still even more, there's one more thing. Well, actually, wait, there's two more. One of them's weird. Okay. Real dude. 
Bandai Namco sent me this. This is just uh, Elden Ring Collector's Edition sealed. I'll probably keep it sealed forever. It has the Millennia statue in it. Thank you so much for sending me that, Bandai. Totally not sponsored at all. I'm still waiting for my million dollars. Actually, it's a million dollars and five cents after tax. So there's that. And then uh, there's some more. It's a little bit more. I, for some reason, I don't know why, this is the weird thing. I have a Bean Boozled package from like back in the day that's sealed. Do you think I should save this? Do you think I should never open this and just put this on eBay one day for like a hundred bucks? Like once they stop doing these because there's some sort of problem with them or whatever? Like, I don't even know if, it, I think, dude, this is, this is an American one. This is from the US. This isn't even can Canadian. This is a, an American Bean Boozled. And like the nutrition facts, they have all the weird font on it too. Like it looks different than the font they use for the Canadian nutrition facts. You can see the American flag in the corner there too. So I can either eat these in like a year or two and die, or someone else can. <laughs> All of them will taste like barf after 10 years, probably. <laughs> probably, but that was weird. I don't know how I got that. Um, this was a gift from my uncle. I, I'm sure everyone knows. First console I ever had in my entire life, the N64. It's just a bag of stuff with a controller. I actually have no games for it at the moment, but my, my uncle, the one that got me into games originally, who got me into N64, got me an N64 for my recent birthday. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna play it on stream at some point. It's pretty cool. So that was awesome. Uh, all right, and I'll see if I can finish this up in the best order. All right, so this is just something for people that like music. I have Polyphia vinyls. I got Muse by Polyphia on vinyl. Uh, this was a gift from a friend. And we got Culture Shock on vinyl as well. Um, they do actually have their newest album on vinyl available and the ones before it. I haven't gotten them yet. I will. I'm going to get every single Polyphia on vinyl that I can. They only make so many, so I think they make like thousands maybe and then they're out. But that was cool. That was really cool. And then... The finale. Oh boy. Oh. Okay, so you guys are gonna remember this stuff for sure. But there's one thing that's a twist that you might have never seen before. So, you know, Nintendo DS, not that old, right? Nintendo DS Lite. It works. I mean, they're not super valuable, but it works. Pretty cool, whatever. Kratos P, P, uh, sorry, PSP, you know, it works. It, again, it's not that cool, but it's, it's a PSP. You probably remember it. Second generation, not the first one. But do you remember this one? Purple Glacier Game Boy Color. The exact same one I got. The year 2000 on the dot, six years old. And I remember the story too, because I already had a Game Boy. I got one for Christmas when I was six years old that was green. People broke into the place we were staying and stole all of our stuff. And uh, yeah, and I, I thought I wouldn't get a Game Boy again. And then my mom actually, uh, like a month or two later, told me to look under my pillow when I was like seven or six, six and a half, seven, whatever. It was between the time frame of it getting stolen, the other one. And she had put a Game Boy color purple glacier under the pillow. And it was it was even cooler than the first time I got a Game Boy because I genuinely thought we would I would never get a Game Boy again because we didn't have a lot of money. And um, we had never been robbed before either. This was like a planned break-in. So it was so cool to see this like under the pillow. And I I lost that Game Boy. Um, so I don't know how I lost it, but I just, it got lost in translation as I grew up or something like that. And to get another one of these, like I just like having it because I remember that. So it's really cool, but um, it works still too. What should we play? Oh, I got Pokemon Gold right here. What? Pokemon Gold. Huh? Like a, reprodu a reproduction of Pokemon Gold? No, it's the real thing, dude. That's the real Pokemon Gold. Check this shit out. Remember that? Pretty sick, dude. <laughs> so uh, we got that. Um, and then... I don't know if anyone remembers Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Stories. Up until like the newer Yu-Gi-Oh! games, I used to like them, so I, I played them. I actually have Fire Red as well, but here's Sapphire for GBA. 
Then we got Pokemon Yellow as well. Um, so the only thing missing from the Game Boy games, I can't even get that to focus. That's really yellow, holy shit. Pikachu's just lighting up the screen. Pika. Okay. I gotta get a Pikachu one of those things, like the crochet things. All right, the final thing, the coolest thing right here that I have from the gaming handhelds. It's a Game Boy Advance. But wait, but wait, they didn't, they didn't make red Game Boy Advances, did they? With black buttons, what the fuck? Also, does something weird catch your eye there? Like the reflection of the rainbow? Why is it rainbow? What? But, but wait, oh! <gasps> What? The screen lights up. The screen lights up. What the fuck? <laughs> so this is a custom uh, Game Boy Advance with an IPS LED screen. Um, the quality of it looks better than if you were to emulate a Game Boy game on your phone, on an iPhone. Um, these are really, really cool, but you can't buy them in a store normally. I had to go to a store where a guy has a friend that makes these as a business and he just sells them through his business on the side. And I've been looking for one for a while just because like, I think in the future, this is actually gonna be valuable. I actually invested in this because I think it's going to actually hold its value in the future and be usable too, obviously. So if you're bored or something like that once in a while, you maybe go on a trip, maybe go camping, wanna play something for 30 minutes or whatever. Maybe you're on a bus. Anyways, that's sick. We got that. And that's all the cool shit I have. Hopefully you guys feel like you went back through the 90s with me because uh, I was born in 94 and I grew up with a lot of cool stuff. But wait a second, there's one more thing. You can't tell me that a 90s collection reveal is complete without Beyblades. This is a Drigger V Beyblade from <laughs> like 2001 or something like that. Uh, and these are the Takara Tommy Beyblades. These ones are actually more sought after. They're actually higher quality than Hasbro Beyblades. The Jap these are the Japanese ones and they work. And I'm gonna do a Beyblade battle on stream one day <laughs> for fun. I got so many you guys might recognize from the show though. We got Drasil. My guy, my guy Drasil with the defense ring, dude, and the freaking ball bearings in the bottom. Anybody remember that? We got... We got Dragoon, dude. Tyson. Fucking Dragoon, man, with the black attack ring. Dude, these are in such good shape, too. The guy that sold me these, man, got ripped off. I'm telling you. We got... We got Seaborg. I believe, or is this Wyborg? Yeah, Wyborg. Wyborg was, uh... One that I actually owned at one point. Uh, we got Dronzer. We got Dronzer, the, the, the Firebird, the Phoenix. It's pretty sick. It's when they changed his attack ring to the four-piece. I got... Let's see what else. We got this guy. This guy with the crazy rotating attack ring right here. The orange one. I have... What is this? Griffin. I have Griffin, the baby blue Beyblade. And this is like one of the only baby blue ones. And I got a couple other custom ones. Um, we got Grizzly, or Galsly. Sorry, Galsly. Galsly was very popular. Galsly was a good Beyblade. I remember people winning with this quite a bit. I got... Dude, I got the freaking Easy Launcher, Easy Grip. You never know when you're going to be walking in a dark alleyway and you just hear like footsteps behind you and you're like, what the hell is that? And then, you know, your, your significant other turns towards you and they're like, baby, are, aren't you scared? Someone's behind us. And you're just like, no, I got my easy grip launcher. Let it rip. And then you just fucking pull it and the Beyblade shreds the guy in two pieces. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let it rip, dude. All right, well, that's 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 actually all the cool. There's no more cool things I have to show you today other than there's a surprise. There's a game that I'm going to play that I've never played on stream. And I'm very excited to play it. It's the most excited I've been to play a game on stream since I was doing the run for Elden Ring. And I was really enjoying it, which I still did enjoy. Don't get me wrong. But I think I need to also do some other things, too, which I didn't do properly when I originally came back to streaming. So... Guess what game I'm going to play. I'm going to give you guys another couple minutes and I'm going to open it. If you can guess what it is, I'll give you a tier three sub or I will gift 
the equivalent of whatever amount of subs that is to somebody else. Like five subs, I guess. Super Mario Bros. 3. <laughs> Doom Eternal, no. No, it's okay. Just just to clarify, it's a big brain game. It's a high IQ game. It's a freaking super hard. It's one of the hardest games, in my opinion, that I will ever play, probably. It's one of the hardest games I've ever played. And it is endlessly rewarding. But, like, very, I'm very bad at it, though, compared to, like, people that are good. So. Super Meat Boy Bashi, no, Solitaire. <laughs> Solitaire. 